Imagine you're watching TV in peace one night. That's when the broadcast is interrupted and an emergency message is played. It says that a nuke is imminent and you're about to be blown up. You need to seek shelter right away. You may assume that this nuke is coming from China or Russia, but really the nuke has been launched by your own country, the United States. It sounds like something that would never happen, but it almost did. The date was January 24th in 1961. Eight crew members were flying a B-52 Stratofortress plane. The plane was flying over Goldsboro, North Carolina, and it was carrying two Megaton Mark 39 nuclear bombs. This was part of the Cold War program at the time. During the Cold War, nuclear armed planes were flying at all times. But during the flight, the B-52 developed a fuel leak in its right wing. Air traffic control said it needed to head back to Seymour Johnson Air Force Base immediately. It began to fly back, but the plane soon lost control. Six of the eight crew ejected, and the B-52 began to spin. The two megaton nuclear bombs then separated from the plane. While it was falling, the plane broke up in the sky and then crashed on impact. One of the bombs sank 55 feet into a swampy farmland. To this day, it's never been recovered, and its uranium core is still buried underground. That's right, there is an unexploded nuke inside a swamp in North Carolina. The army figured it would be too difficult to dig this out. That's why they simply bought the farmland from the farmer. To this day, there's lots of barbed wire fences around it, and there's also army guards guarding it at all times. But the real scary thing is what happened to the other bomb. Unlike the swamp bomb, this one actually opened its parachute. It then floated to earth, but when it hit the ground, three out of four safety switches became unlocked. This was a one in a million freak accident. The safety switches are very simple, low voltage switches. And just a single one of these prevented the nuke from going off. If the fourth switch broke like the other three, then North Carolina would be no more. Amazingly, the public did not even know this at the time. That's because this information was not revealed until 2013. Before then, government spokespeople said that the bomb was unarmed and could not explode. But as a Freedom of Information Act request found, this was a total lie. Sadly, during this chaos, three of the crew actually passed away. Five men landed safely but one crew member's parachute did not open, and then the two pilots passed away in the crash. That's a pretty crazy story, but it's also not the first time the USA nearly blew itself up. On September 18th, 1980, something perhaps even more dangerous nearly happened. This was at the Launch Complex 3747. That is a nuke complex in Van Buren County, Arkansas. One day, some mechanics were adding pressure to the second stage oxidizer tank of a Titan II missile. This was topped with a nine megaton W53 nuclear warhead. But that's when one of the mechanics made a pretty dumb mistake. They dropped a wrench socket right onto the nuke. Of course, a wrench socket is a heavy piece of metal, and it fell 80 feet or 24 meters at quite some speed. It then hit the rocket's first stage fuel tank. This caused a hole in the pressurized fuel tank. This began to fill up the entire missile silo with a hypergolic fuel named Aerozyne 50. Eventually, this caused the rocket to collapse. This then caused the Aerozyne to ignite. That's because it came into contact with nitrogen tetroxide. The gigantic explosion threw a 740 ton launch door 600 feet away, and it also ejected the nuclear warhead. The warhead landed 100 feet outside of the launch complex. Now, thankfully, this complex was in the middle of nowhere. This meant the warhead caused no human or property damage. Thankfully, its safety features worked, and it prevented it from detonating. But if this didn't work, then the entire state of Arkansas would have turned into a mushroom cloud. But now let's move over on the map to Georgia. The United States nearly blew itself up on February 5th, 1958. At 2 a.m., the Air Force was doing a simulated combat mission. Involved in this training exercise was a B-47 bomber. This was carrying a Mark 15 Mod Zero nuclear bomb. During the exercise, the B-47 bomber collided with an F-86 fighter jet. The F-86 fighter jet was also part of the training exercise. When the planes collided, the F-86's wings were ripped off. This caused it to fly down to the ground and crash. But amazingly, the B-47 managed to remain airborne. This was critical as it was carrying a nuclear bomb. However, in the collision, its fuel tank was severely damaged. At this point, the Air Force controllers did not know what to do. Remember, the airplane was carrying a 7,600 pound bomb. It was a complete bomb with a nuclear capsule attached to it. They were certain that if the plane tried to land, there would be a big nuclear explosion. So that's why they told the B-47 to dump the bomb. 
They did this just off the coast of Tybee Island, Georgia. There was a gigantic search, but to this day the bomb has never been found. It's thought to be buried under 15 feet of sea clay. But it's pretty scary to think that right there is an unexploded nuke. If it did go off, then the state of Georgia would be wiped out. It could also cause things like tsunamis to occur. But that's not the only time a training exercise nearly ended the USA. Another training exercise nearly got way too real on March 11th, 1958. This took place in Mars Bluff, South Carolina. One day, some B-47 bomber planes set off from Savannah, Georgia. They were heading to Bruntingthorpe Air Force Base in the United Kingdom. This was for a Cold War training exercise. But in the middle of the flight, the captain of a B-47 bomber noticed a problem with the locking pins on board. These locking pins were keeping in place a Mark VI 30 kiloton fission bomb. A nuclear fission is a process in nuclear physics. This meant that if the bomb broke the locking pins, it would cause total devastation. Not only would it wipe out anywhere that it landed, but it would also radiate maybe the entire country. Much like in the movie Dr. Strangelove, Captain Kolka sat atop of the bomb. He did this to try and examine it. But while doing this, he accidentally grabbed the emergency bomb release mechanism. This caused the bomb to come loose. Now, the bay doors were closed, but this bomb was three tons. This meant it simply broke through it and fell out of the plane. Thankfully, Captain Kulk was able to pull himself back into the plane just in time, but he very nearly fell with the bomb Dr. Strangelove style. The explosives detonated on impact, and it left a massive 35 feet deep crater. This destroyed a home in Mars Bluff, South Carolina. I wonder if their insurance policy covered nuclear bombs being dropped on their house. Now, you may be wondering, why is the the world not over if this nuke was dropped. Well, thankfully, the plutonium core was not triggered, but this was down to a mistake. It actually should have been triggered, and this meant that the bomb was defective. So it's actually really lucky that this nuke did not work. During the incident, one air traffic controller actually heard the radio transmission from the plane. The word from the captain was, oh no, I dropped the darn thing. Imagine how you would feel knowing that you just dropped a nuclear bomb over your own country. But clumsy mistakes can sometimes nearly cause the end of the world. This was also proved in 1945. An incident took place at the Los Alamos National Lab in New Mexico. Some scientists were experimenting with the demon core. This was a 15 pound, 3.5 inch diameter mass of plutonium, and it was actually involved in two terrible incidents. The first took place in 1945. A tungsten brick was dropped onto the core. This caused a chain reaction and blasted a scientist with radiation, so much that the scientist instantly passed away. The second incident took place in 1946. The demon core was surrounded by some spheres of beryllium. The top portion was being raised and lowered by hand, and they were clumsily using a screwdriver to prop the spheres open. However, the screwdriver fell and this caused a flash of blue light to come out from the core. This was the process of the core becoming supercritical and releasing a load of radiation. The scientist involved actually passed away nine days later from the radiation. And years later, three of the other scientists working there passed away from radiation-related illnesses. But despite all of the chaos the demon core used, it was actually put to use. On the 1st of July 1946, it was detonated on Bikini Atoll Island. This was part of a nuclear test video of which was recently declassified. So those were some times the USA nearly nuked itself. If you think that's scary, then you should know this. In the United States alone, there are 11 lost nukes. These are nukes which are just missing and we don't know where they are. I'm surprised they don't teach us about these events in school. But when you look back at history, there have been many times the world nearly ended for good. Some say that at some point there will be a nuclear fallout. But many dispute this because of mutually assured destruction. This means that if one country nuked another, the other country would simply send a nuke back. The only problem is, what if a country makes a mistake and accidentally nukes itself? It sounds silly, but as we've learned just now, it can happen. But now it's time to make your voice heard. Comment below, do you think we will ever have a nuclear fallout? If you want some more amazing videos, then check out my second channel. But as always, thank you for watching. There's some more videos you may like on screen right now. Leave a like if you enjoyed, and if you haven't already, what are you waiting for? Subscribe to Top 10s.